Hello, okay. this is Kyle. And this is Christy. And we are here with part two of our painting tutorial for Reaper's Bones 3 Kickstarter figure, Gorma. Gorma, giant purple worm. Or, well, not purple worm, right? Because that's, yeah. Uh, so we've done stage one of this in a previous video, which you can find a link to down below, hopefully, if I did that right. Uh, and in that step, we base coated the figure black. It's not a primer because it's a bones figure. You don't really need to prime. Uh, we base coated black, and then we did a zenithal highlighting technique, essentially, uh, to white the highlights with the, also with the airbrush. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so now we're coming in with color, and we're going to be doing all of the local colors. Uh, just what is a local color? Is okay, it? a local color would be like if you wanted your person to have a red shirt and blue jeans, you would paint that first. And then we'll be coming in with lighting effect colors afterwards to so affect those. For those of us trying to learn vocabulary words because we don't know them, local color would be the color the object actually is. And then what would you call the other lighting effects? Is that the right term for the yeah. rest of it? All right. So, yes, what she said is absolutely accurate. We're coming in here. We're doing a uh, purple, uh, I'm calling it an airbrush glaze. You could accomplish the same effect with a regular brush. Yeah, it's a really accurate term. Um which would be like an oil painting technique almost where you have something and then you kind of glaze a very thin, transparent color over that. Yeah, that sounds about right. So the colors that we're using for this are manufactured by a company called Golden, and this is their high flow acrylic series. They actually have a transparent set, if you're interested in it, on uh, Dick Blick, I think. They have it usually on sale. Yeah, well, we got both of their opaque and their transparent uh, group sets and really filled out our painting wall. We have a whole wall of paint. That yeah. <laughs> so the reason that, I'm, that, I, that I do prefer those paints for larger figures is cost effectiveness, right? Uh, Reaper's paints, if you thin them out with a clear acrylic medium, would be better. They are better. The downside to that is you get like a half an ounce in a vial of a Reaper paint, and I would use a half a bottle just doing this purple glaze that we finished. So now we're doing our second set, which is the red, right? We've done the chest and coming in, and I'm hitting also the mouth, which we've already glazed purple, uh, mostly because we changed our mind about the color of the mouth. As I was doing the red, it just looked like it'd be better. Yeah, but the, the layer effect worked out pretty well, and it doesn't really look like a mistake. It, I kind of like it better. <laughs> that quick shot that you saw there, that was a picture of the paint that we're using, that golden acrylic medium. So now I'm coming in with highlights. So we talked about doing colors. I'm coming in, I'm putting some yellow, uh, very thin. Again, this is sped up four times, so really slow. You cannot take this back off. Right? Yeah, this is kind of the sensitive part of the process. Um, so you want to go slow and you want to go thin and build up as you, as you layer. Right. And as to for thin, that doesn't mean thin it with water or alcohol. Not your typical thin paint. You do not want this to run. You don't want to get it in the crevices. You want this highlight to stick where you put it. Dust it over the top, really. That's the best term I can think of for it, yeah. So you can see it's just barely starting to look yellow. I know the figure's moving around a lot for this. You'll see it a little better when we come in with the shading because we did not speed that far. Uh, but it'll just start to tinge the underneath color. So you see where on the top there's a really good shot where the purple is getting tinged by that yellow and it's sort of turning a little pink. Now, That's what we want, just that subtle color shift. The other thing is you'll notice that I just finished putting the yellow on the chest where uh, it shouldn't be, right? That should be in the shadow from the head. Uh, you're going to cheat with this. It's okay your eye will absolutely pick it up and, and like it. Yeah, and we dusted the top of the teeth also, which kind of gave it like a, I don't know, bone feeling. I like it. So this is the, um, the green. This is not the step yet where we did it at normal speed. Uh, or maybe it is? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we're using green for the shading here, and we're going to talk a little bit about color choices, right? So... Uh, we're going to do an entire video on color choices. Sorry for clearing my throat there. Yeah, I'm going to do a video showing you guys how to pick good colors that go together, that fit well, uh, not just for single figures, but uh, stuff for groups. So if you're doing a big group of figures that you can sort of 
get a harmonious color scheme going for all of them, and they don't have to all look identical. This is really important for well-painted armies, right? It's one thing to paint all of your army with yellow armor and blue pants and all this other stuff and have them all be the same color to look uniform. But you can accomplish that same effect with a variety of colors, provided they are the right colors. Yeah. And in that video, I'll also talk about warm and cool hues, which I'll touch on here. We want to have the light source be warm, so uh, more on the orange, yellow, red side of the spectrum. And then cool colors, we want uh, blues and greens, which we're coming in with now on the underside. Actually, what we're doing now is this is the bonus time, right? Our goal for this figure was to have a, an hour or less. Yeah. Involving. We finished in 40 minutes, so we came back and we wanted to do the spikes and kind of pick those out, make it look a little more poppy, and I tried to do it with brushwork and totally failed and got super uh, lazy with it, and we were like, we could just do this with an airbrush. <laughs> so right there, I dropped the figure. There's another great selling point for bones. The only thing that happened was I scuffed up the top of those teeth a little bit, which I'll correct later as best I can. Uh, so again, all I'm doing here is... The same thing I would have done even if she hadn't done the brushwork, which is just coming in. We wanted these to be lighter, the spikes. So because I painted them over purple, thinking I would not have time to come back and do these a different color, uh, we have to go back and paint them white. So, And then we also have to add the lighting effect. So ideally, you would want to do this step with your local colors step. When we were doing the Absolutely. purple and the red, you would want to paint all of those white at that point and then do the lighting effects on top of all of it together. Uh, we didn't think we were going to get the chance to do that, so now we have to kind of go back and repeat steps. But so, you can still do that. Yes, absolutely. That's what it's. I'm, I'm demonstrating here that you can correct errors, but it is time-consuming. And the whole point of this process is I want a figure that's going to look good on the table. When I put it down, my players are going, wow, that's a cool thing, and I'm scared of it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Not thinking, wow, that's a cool thing with an okay paint job, or wow, that's a cool thing. I can't believe you spent 12 hours painting it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's face it, how often are your players going to fight a purple worm if you have a game that might take up a quarter of one gaming session? Maybe. Unless you're really slow or really fast with fights. Yeah. Think, yeah. So we're finishing up here, adding in the shadows, and just kind of touching up here or there, making sure we didn't miss any spots or leave any white areas. Now I'm coming in with the highlights. So uh, all I'm doing here is coming in and focusing on making sure I get the highlight on the spines that I want in the sun. And that's the whole point of this. Uh, this is almost a brown. I know it looks very yellow in the cup, but if I think the name of it is yellow iron oxide. I think that's the color. So it's, it's a very warm yellow. And again, by warm, that means it's, it's kind of a red orange tinged yellow. It's not, Right. It's not bluish. Away from blue, right? So generally speaking, warm versus cold, I think, can be described succinctly by how close or far away it is from blue. The closer it is to a blue color, like ice, it's a cold color. The further away it is from blue, the warmer the color. Yeah. Again, we'll go over all of that in the, the color theory episode, and I can really explain it to you guys. But just for purposes for this figure... Warmer on the top and cooler on the underneath of all of these scales and underneath the head here. So this part is not sped up. This is the part of the video I was telling you about earlier that uh, we just left at normal speed so you can see how easy it is to overspray, right? Those couple things that I just painted there look very green, and that's not your goal. Really, you'll find as you're playing with the brush, you're going to put it. It doesn't look like there's paint on it. You keep spraying. It still doesn't look like there's paint. You're going to keep spraying, still doesn't look like there's paint, and then, oops, the figure screen. And there you go. That's our final product. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, like and subscribe, right? That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, people did that. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. And if you haven't done it yet, that'd be cool. Go ahead and, and still do. Uh, okay. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back with some more uh, painting tutorials. I think we're going to be working on the Fire Giant Jailer some more next. Mm, that'd be fun. That would be. Listen to ourselves. You ready for this? Wasn't our best, but it wasn't our worst. <laughs>